Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very a good day to everyone. So, how are you? Okay, so I hope you guys are in a good health. Okay. So, today uh, we are going to learn a new topic. Okay, the first topic for this semester. Okay, so let me set up first. Okay guys, so for today's lesson, okay, we are going to study about the characteristic and classification of living organisms. So this is the first topic for this semester. Okay, the first one, uh, we are going to study about the characteristic of living organism. Okay, so basically when we talk about living organism, you should know that the example of them are human, animal, plant, bacteria, virus, and so on, right? So basically, uh, this, these are the characteristic, okay, that a living organism should have. The first one is movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. So here, I want to talk a little bit, okay, about what does all uh, what do all these things means okay so in terms of movement movement is an action by organism causing a change of position or a place so basically movement is very important why because organism need to move to find the food to find the mate to run from predator or or so on okay and the next one, respiration. Okay, respiration describe the chemical reaction in the cell that breaks down nutrient of molecule and release energy. So I think this one you have learned during form one that respiration is the process to generate energy. Uh, so for respiration, the formula that we should know is that uh, glucose plus oxygen. So it will produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So basically, respiration is a process to generate energy so that from the energy, we can do our, our stuff. We can continue our living, okay? The next one is sensitivity, okay? Sensitivity is the ability to detect or respond to the change in the environment, okay? Sensitivity is very important. For example, when you touch a hot object, okay? For example, you, 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 uh, what? you touch uh, iron, for example, you know, when you iron your clothes or whatever, suddenly you touch your iron. So definitely, if you have sensitivity, you will remove, you will withdraw your hand directly without thinking. So sensitivity is very important. Okay, the next one is growth. Okay, I think growth is uh, very familiar to you. It's a permanent increase in size, for example, height. Okay, and then reproduction. Uh, reproduction is a process that can make more some kind of organism. Okay, so respirate, uh, uh, reproduction should be uh, should occur within the same uh, species. For example, human and human, uh, we cannot uh, reproduce human by using monkey. Uh, no, okay, human and human. That's why it say that the same kind of organism. Okay. Okay, so uh, reproduction can be either sexually or asexually. Okay, this one we are going to discuss in detail in the next chapter, okay? The next one is excretion. Excretion is the removal of organism from organi uh, sorry. Uh, excretion is the removal from organism of toxic material and substance in excess of requirement. Okay, so basically in a simple way, I would say that excretion is a process to remove waste product. Okay, the example of waste product, for example, what? Okay, carbon dioxide, water, urea, and so on, okay? Okay, so this one we are going to study in detail in the future, okay? And the and last one is nutrition. Nutrition is the taking of material for energy, growth, and development, okay? So whatever you eat, for sure, the nutrient, okay, from the fruit, from the food that you add, for sure, you want to absorb, right? For example, carbohydrate, protein, vitamin, fiber, and so on. Why? Because we need them for energy, growth, and development. Okay, so basically, this is the character characteristic of living organism. 
Okay guys, so the next one, we are going to study about classification system because we know that uh, in this world, there are so many living organisms. We have human, we have plant, we have animal and so on. So first you should know what species mean. Okay, species is a group of organism that can reproduce to produce fertile of the spring. Okay, uh, so I think this one a very straightforward information. The next one, binomial system is an intentionally a Greek system in which scientific name of organism is made up by two parts, which is genus and species. So basically binomial system is a system that we can use to identify the organism. Okay, so in binomial in binomial system, there are two things that you should write. The first one is genus, and the next one is species. Uh, okay, so this is these are the rules that you need to uh, follow in binomial system. The first one, genus, okay, is written in a capital. Uh, so, for example, here, okay, mastella. So, mastella is a genus. Uh, and then it should be written in capital letter. So that's why I put a capital M okay, in the front. Why species? Okay, this is the name of the species. Okay, so the species must be written in a small, in a small letter. So that's why all of them are written in the uh, small letter. Okay, and all genus and species uh, needed to be write to be written in an italic form. So that's why you see here, okay, they are quite you know uh, got chondong sedikit. So that's why this is the way how you can name the organism. Okay, Mastella armenia. Okay, if you want to know what is this, you can Google yourself. Okay, you have internet, right? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, so other than binomial system that we learned just now, we also can use DNA. Okay, to classify organism. Okay, for those who don't know, okay, uh, DNA uh, is present in the chromosome. Okay, so some of you might not be familiar with chromosome. Okay, for those who don't know, chromosome is in the nucleus. Uh, okay, uh, nucleus, you remember, right? Nucleus, so in the cell, we have uh, nucleus. In the nucleus, we have chromosome. In chromosome, we have DNA. Uh, okay, so different organism will have different number of chromosome. For example, we as a human, uh, we have 46 chromosome number in the nucleus. Uh, but for other species, uh, depending on what kind of species, for example, orang utan. Uh, so orang utan, they have 48 chromosome. Uh, so, if you, if you want to know either you are human or orangutan, uh, maybe you can check your number of chromosome. If you have 46, Alhamdulillah, you are still a human. Uh, otherwise, uh, you become orangutan. Okay, gorilla, okay, gorilla, shimpanzee, uh, bonobo, they are all can be in the same species. Why? Because they have the same number of chromosome. Uh, okay, bear in mind chromosome we can find in the nucleus. Okay. Okay, so these are the other traditional method okay, to classify uh, organisms. So the first one, we can, this is like, uh, is practiced a long time ago. Okay, but right now we use this one. Okay, we use uh, binomial system, we use DNA and so on. But right now, uh, but I mean like a long time ago, they will use uh, morpholo morphology and also anatomy. So what are they? Morphology is a study uh, of the form or appearance of organism. So basically, we uh, if you if they want to conduct the study, they will see okay the physical characteristic of the organism. For example, they have uh, how many legs? Okay, they uh, they have hard shell or not? Okay, uh, okay something like that lah. Okay, and the next one anatomy. Anatomy is the study of internal structure of organism and revealed by dissection. Dissection means you cut them. Okay, for example, you have a body, whatever lah, or, or animal body, for example, and then you dissect them. Dissect means you cut their body because you want to study what is inside the body. For example, you want to see the heart, the lung, the kidney, and so on. 
Okay, so this one we can use them, but this one is practiced a long time ago. So we have already a sophisticated way to, you know, to classify our organism. Okay, guys, so this is the features of organism. Okay, all living organisms should share this common characteristic, which are, okay, so regardless of what they are, they are human, they are animal, they are plant, they are bacteria, they are whatever, all of living organism should have this, uh, regardless of who they are. They should have cytoplasm, they should have cell membrane, they should have DNA, they also should have ribosome. Okay, so I, I, I think uh, right, uh, cytoplasm, you know, right? Okay, cell membrane is also familiar, DNA family, but ribosome, uh, maybe some of you don't remember, okay? Ribosome is uh, something that we can find in the cell to produce protein, okay? To produce protein. Okay, so all of this, okay, if they, in the exam, they have to ask, if they ask you, what is the features of organism? So you can write this thing, okay? Okay, the next one, uh, we are going to study in, in detail, lah. okay? First one is about kingdom. <coughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, kingdom. Kingdom is used to recognize the largest group of organism because we know that we have large number of organism. So that's why we classify them as a kingdom. So basically, there are five major kingdom present in this earth. Okay, so the first one, we have plant kingdom. We have animal kingdom. We have fungus kingdom. We have prokaryote kingdom we have proto protoptis kingdom okay five kingdom okay however virus is not included in under any kingdom because the first one uh, because of virus okay lack of cell membrane cytoplasm and right ribosome and they depend on the host to the to survive okay so virus is not included in any five of this kingdom so uh, virus is something else, okay? After this, we study in detail, okay? Okay, next. Okay, now we go for the first kingdom, okay? Which is animal kingdom. Okay, guys, so basically, actually, under animal kingdom, there are so many examples. But for uh, your syllabus, uh, there are two types of uh, under animal kingdom that you should focus. Okay, we go one by one. The first one is arthropod and the next one is vertebrate. Okay, so we go for the arthropod first. Okay, the first example for animal kingdom is arthropods. Okay, what does arthropod means? Arthropods mean jointed limb. Ah, so, maksudnya, dia punya badan tu ber, ber, bercantum. Ah, jointed limb tu. So all animal under this kingdom has this characteristic. Uh, okay, so all this is their the similarity. Okay, the other similarity among them are they have external skeleton. Uh, they have external skeleton. Okay, they have cuticle on their body. Uh, okay, and they have segmented body. Okay. Okay, and then arthropod has four classes. Okay, the first one is insect. Number two, ara, arachnid. And then crustacea, eh, crustacea. And the, la and the last one, uh, myriapods. Okay, so now we are going to study in detail the class under arthropods. Okay, the first one is kingdom. Under kingdom is uh, class. Okay. Okay, so uh, as we as we have studied just now, there are four class under a tripod. So I make a you know a table for you to know the difference between these four. Okay, insect for example, uh, the example uh, dragon. Okay, for ar arachnid, spider, uh, crustacea, crabs. Not Mr. Crab, okay. And then the last one, Maria Potts, for example, we have centipede. Okay, so for here, uh, for, for example, insect, okay, they must have three pairs of legs. Uh, this one, four, five, and more. This one have more than ten. Uh, okay. And this one, uh, you see, the body is uh, divided into the head, thorax, and abdomen. 
Okay, here is something else. Okay, maybe this one you can copy and study. Okay, now this one is a very straightforward information. Okay. Okay, for those who want to uh, copy the, not the notes, maybe you can pause the video and you can copy uh, uh, by writing. Okay. Okay, I move forward. Okay, now we go to the next uh, example of animal kingdom, which is the last one, vertebrate. Okay, vertebrate means vertebral column, which also known as a backbone. Uh, because I know in uh, standard six, right, uh, you have studied about vertebrate and in vertebrate. Vertebrate is uh, organism with backbone, while in, in invertebrate is one with no backbone. Okay, so under vertebrate, there are five class. Okay, unlike uh, apa, arthropod, they have four class. For vertebrate, they have five, five class, which are fish, amphibia, reptile, birds, and mammal. Okay, so uh, the same thing. I have uh, made some table for you uh, to classify the differences between these five classes. Okay, now, for example, fish, shark, amphibia, Frog, reptile, lizard, bird, okay, pigeon, mammal, mouse, okay, okay, a movement, they use feet, okay, this one, I think it's very straightforward information, you can read on your own, okay, uh, okay, other detail, uh, fish, they are cool, blooded, amphibia, also cool, blooded, reptile, cool, blooded, bird, warm, blooded, mammal, warm, blooded, okay, for those who want to study, uh, the I mean like you want to copy this note okay you can pause the video and then you can copy okay once you're done you can proceed okay I think this is very very easy you can learn on your own okay the next one okay we have done for animal kingdom the next one is plant kingdom okay so plant kingdom there are many of them but for your syllabus there are only one types of kingdom you need to know which is vascular plant kingdom Okay, for animal kingdom too, right? Arthropods and uh, arthropods and uh, vertebrate. Okay, but for plant kingdom, only one you should know, which are which is vascular plant. Okay, so they have only two class. Okay, which are firm and also flowering plant. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, now I, I also put a table for you to know detail about firm and flowering plant. Okay, let's go one by one. Firm. Okay, the stem grow below the ground, but the leaf grow up. Okay, so it's mean like uh, the, the stem grow down on the ground, but the leaf is up. Okay, it has xylem and phloem to transport water and nutrition. And the leaf is different from others because it has several thick cell. Okay, and in terms of reproduction, firm produce gamete instead of seed. Uh, so we can say that firm will do sexual reproduction. Why? Because it produces gamete. Okay, so the gamete is kept in the spore and dispersed by the wind. Okay, so when there is a wind, the wind will disperse the spore. Okay. And the next one is for our flowering plant. So in terms of reproduction, it produces seed. Okay, so they have two types okay, of flowering, flowering plants, which are monocotyledon and dicotyledon. So I think this one you have studied in during form one and even during uh, standard six. Okay, so if you don't understand, uh, maybe you can rewrite. Okay, this one it's very easy. Okay. Okay, the next kingdom is fungi or fungus. Okay, fungus and fungi are the same thing. It's just a matter of singular or plural. Okay, so fungi is made up by hype. Uh, hype, hypa. Okay, so this is hypa. Okay, this is, if you use a uh, microscope, this is how it looks like. Uh, okay, hypa. Okay, so in hypa, there are many nuclei in the cytoplasm. So if you see in this diagram, Okay, so this is one hypa. So inside hypa, there are so many nucleus. Okay, this is one nucleus. This is number two nucleus, number three nucleus, number four. Uh, so many. 
uh, so many of them. Okay, so the example of fungus is, for example, mushroom, parasite fungus on the tree trunk. Okay, for example, this one. Okay, and also mildew. Okay, uh, so this is the example of uh, uh, organism under fungi kingdom. Okay, the next kingdom is prokaryote kingdom. Okay, the example of them are bacteria and blue-green algae. Okay, so the characteristic, the first one, they have cell wall made up by protein, sugar and lipid. Because we know that usually cell wall is made up by cellulose. But unlike uh, bacteria, their cell wall is made up by protein, sugar and lipid. Okay, the next one, the characteristic of bacteria are they have circular DNA of chromosome in cytoplasm. Okay, for example, this is one bacteria. As I said just now, DNA or chromosome we can find in the nucleus. But especially for bacteria, the DNA of chromosome present in the cytoplasm. So here is cytoplasm. This is DNA of the chromosome. So they are not located in the nucleus. Which means that they are free in cytoplasm. Okay, and the last one, they reproduce asexually, which is binary fusion. So this is the how the process takes place. Okay, for example, this is bacteria. They have DNA, right? So DNA that present in the chromosome. So what will happen next is that number B. Okay, the chromosome will uh, replicate from one, it becomes two. Okay, once it's done, it will uh, divide the cytoplasm. Uh, so right now, how many how many bacteria do you have? Two. From two, it becomes four because this one undergo the same thing. Okay. So remember, for binary fission, the first thing they will divide their chromosome, and then they will divide their cytoplasm. Once the cytoplasm is equally divided, then the split become two. So right now, there are two bacteria form. From two, it become four. From four, become whatever. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, the next one is Prototis Kingdom. Okay, Prototis Kingdom. Okay, so unlike prokaryote, the pro Prototis have DNA of chromosome in the nucleus. Uh, okay, kalau proto prokaryote just now, the chromosome uh, or DNA is free in the cytoplasm. But for Prototis, okay, the DNA of chromosome present in the nu nucleus. Okay, some of the prototis is called protopyta. Why? Because they have chloroplast and they can make their own food uh, by photosynthesis. And the example of prototis is uglina. Uh, okay, but some of them is also called as a protozoa. Why? Because they can digest solid food and resemble other animals. So it means that they gain nutrients from others. They do not make their own food. Okay, so for exam, uh, example for them, uh, ameba and paramecium. Okay. And the last one, okay, just now we study that the virus is not included in any uh, kingdom. Why? The first one, because uh, they lack of uh, plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and ribosome. Okay, and they also depend on the host. Okay, right now, this is the information about the virus. Okay, so let's discuss together. There are many different types of virus and they vary in terms of their shape and structure. Uh, right now, for example, virus, you know, coronavirus, uh, HIV virus, and so on. So, uh, this virus, uh, they look differently. Okay, all virus, however, have a central core of RNA or DNA. Uh, so it means that, okay, this is virus, they could have either RNA or DNA. Uh, for human being, we have DNA, but for bacteria, oh, sorry, but for virus, they can have both, either RNA or DNA. Surrounding by protein code. Uh, so this is protein code. Uh, you see, like a cushion, right? Okay, virus has no nucleus, cytoplasm, cell organelle, or cell membrane. That's why they are not considered as an organism. Through some form, have membrane outside their protein code. 
Okay, virus particle, therefore, they are not cell. So virus is not considered under a cell. They do not feed, respire, excrete, uh, grow, and it is uh, deb uh, debatable uh, whether they can be classified as living organism. Okay, virus do uh, reproduce, but only inside of the cell li living organism. Uh, this one, you can say that host. Uh, so when the virus get inside the host, they can reproduce. Okay, why? Because they can use the material provided by the host. Uh, okay, a generalized virus particle shown in the figure 1.33. Uh, you see here, okay. Uh, and the code is made up by pack of protein unit called caprosomia uh, here. So it has protein code that can protect the virus. Uh, so it's made by uh, capromia containing many protein molecules and the protein code is called uh, capsid. Okay. So this is basically the how virus looks like. Okay. But for coronavirus, you know coronavirus, right? They have like a crown. Uh, like crown. Uh, that's why they call uh, that virus as a corona. Corona means crown. Okay. Let's move. Okay. Okay, guys, so this is the last uh, slide for our lecture today. The next one is uh, Dichotomersky. Uh, uh, okay, so this is one of the method also you can classify organism. Okay, why this is very important to identify organism with specific physical characteristics. So the rule, you should start with a very commonly general characteristic. Okay, like obviously lah, when we see the animal, if we want to classify them, for sure, we see either they have leg or they don't have. Ah, so that's why, basically here, we start with the leg. Okay, and then once you start if, with the common one, the common characteristic, you can add some more by using more specific features. For example, they have leg. Okay, so if they have leg, how many leg do they have? Uh, and then you can skip about leg, now you can talk about other things. Okay, and then at the last one, uh, you can find the specific organism that has all these characteristics. Okay, for example, lah. Okay, uh, right now uh, you have snail. Uh, you want to know uh, what is the uh, characteristic of snail. Okay, I give you one example. Okay, for example, we focus on snail. Okay, so we go for number one first. Okay, snail has leg or no leg? No leg, right? So we go to number five. Okay, so uh, for the snail, the body is cemented or not? So the body is not cemented. So we go to number six. So have shell or no shell? Snail have shell. So that's why snail is put here. Okay. Now we go for the other example. Okay. Earthworm, for example. Okay. We go number one. Has leg or no leg? No leg. Number five. Okay. Body segmented or not segmented? Segmented. So that's why it is earthworm. Okay. So the other animal uh, is also apply the same thing here. Okay, guys. So I think that's all for today. So I hope uh, once you finish uh, watching all the video, uh, for, uh, sorry, once you watch, uh, once you finish uh, watching this video, please write down your name, your class in the comment section. Okay, it's easy for me to take the attendance. Okay, please write down your full name and class. Okay, uh, if you don't understand anything, you can rewatch the video uh, at your free time. But if you still don't understand, you can PM me uh, to ask me more questions. Okay, guys, so that's all for today. So I see you again next week. Okay, Assalamualaikum.